Krispy Kreme has started an online war, lemon is everywhere, and if you're working nine to five, you're going to love Dolly Parton's new ice cream. All of this, plus a sit down chat with Baker and Too Faced Cosmetics founder, Jared Blandino, this week on Need to Know. Bakers and happy Easter. Welcome back to Need to Know, where each week we're serving up all of the hottest takes on the latest baking news, gossip, entertainment, and online trends fresh from the oven. I'm Mia Brabham, host, entertainment expert, and brownie buff. And today our special guest is Jared Blandino. He's the co-founder of Too Faced Cosmetics and the host of Bake Up with Jared. So be sure to subscribe, rate five stars, and review wherever you listen to podcasts, or like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Now, grab some breakfast, bake as you listen, or pour yourself a cup of coffee or tea, because here's this week's trends, hot from the oven. This is not a drill. If you love Dolly Parton, you're in for quite the treat. The legendary country singer, philanthropist, and national treasure has teamed up with Jenny's to create, (gasps) wait for it, a new ice cream flavor, strawberry pretzel pie. This ice cream really does serve up an ode to the super sweet and super sassy queen of country by being a sweet, salty, timeless combo that, as Jenny says, makes you feel good. The dreamy dessert will feature layers of salty pretzel streusel, cream cheese ice cream, and bright red strawberry sauce. Yum. Every purchase of the ice cream will benefit Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, a book gifting program that provides free books to kids until the age of five. But here's the catch. They're only doing one run of about 10K pints starting April 8th in stores and online. So if you plan on going in person, Jenny says to get there very early, quote, like before open, end quote. I know this is only for a limited time, but Jenny's, if you're listening or watching this, I will always love you. Blink twice if you think we should get a Jolene ice cream next. Lemons and lemon flavored things are everywhere now that it's spring in my Oprah voice. We've seen lemon recipes popping up in all the places, in food magazines, online, in our dreams. Then what do you know? We hear that Meghan Markle baked a lemon olive oil cake for World Central Kitchen's volunteers with her own homegrown lemons from her garden. World Central tweeted out that since their COVID response began in Chicago, they've served nearly 500,000 meals. That's so many. Prince Harry and Meghan sent over the spring cake with a sweet letter for their team, and it read, Sometimes we overlook how much it matters to express thanks and show appreciation. Perhaps we realize now more than ever that fundamental human moments, like enjoying a meal together, fill us up with more than just food, even if that food is delicious. This is such a true statement and a beautiful reminder. We talk about it a little bit later with Jared, too, how food is just amazing and baking nourishes people. It brings us joy, but it also brings joy to our family and friends. And we'll talk more to Gemma about this, too, and all the things you can do with lemon. Very exciting. You've probably heard the big news, but Krispy Kreme announced a yummy but divisive incentive, a free glazed donut for all who show up with their COVID vaccination card. It's actually caused quite a stir online. Some people are saying that it's unhealthy and promotes bad eating, while others say it's a great idea to push towards herd immunity and that body weight shaming is never okay. I'm not in a doctor, you know, newsflash, but I do have to say, I think everyone knows a donut a day is not the best. And I have a personal message. If you've lost weight during the pandemic, you're beautiful. If you've gained weight during the pandemic, you're beautiful. If you look and feel about the same as the beginning of the pandemic, guess what? You're still beautiful. Go enjoy a donut. On a way less stressful note, pasta lovers are in for a lovely surprise because there's a new short wavy sauce holding shape. Dan Pashman, host of the food podcast, The Sporkful, has introduced his Cascatelli, Italian for Little Waterfalls, pasta. Cascatelli is short and has a flat strip with ruffles on the side that sticks out like a 90 degree angle, making for a very satisfying bite full of saucy goodness. It's like scoops tortilla chips, but it's pasta. How cool is that? I'm so excited. It's been a three-year effort by Pashman, who says he's not actually sure if it's this that's kept him up at night or his children, maybe both. And I know pasta is all the same, but it's really not. I'm one of those people who swears having fettuccine tastes different than macaroni, even though I know it doesn't. But really, I mean, have you ever tried to make macaroni and cheese with spaghetti pasta? Exactly. Also, 
At the risk of looking like a total fool, Sarah on the BBB team taught me something about pasta this week that I had no idea about. It's my new favorite fun fact. Different pastas are actually named after what they're shaped like. So for example, here we go with the pronunciation game. Radiatore pasta is kind of shaped like radiators. Can I pronounce this one? Orecchiette looks like ears. I think I got it. And Campanelle, an easy one, looks similar to bell-like flowers. I saw a picture on Google and it just made me so happy inside and warm. I gotta try these out and you should too. Pasta's so cool. And this is such awesome, interesting news. Celebs are baking it up in the kitchen this week. Ryan Seacrest made cloud bread on live with Kelly and Ryan. Florence Pooh, the actress from films like Little Women and Midsummer, is back with her Instagram cooking series titled Cooking with Flo. And Tia Maui from Sister Sister and her daughter Cairo made the cutest baby shark cakes ever on Tia Maui's Quick Fix. I have to say, watching Ryan bake in a suit, seeing Tia's little baby daughter do a face plant into cake because she was so excited to try it, and seeing myself in Flo's taste test dance made my whole week so much fun. But Last but not least, our girl Jennifer Garner has released yet another episode of Pretend Cooking Show in Vancouver. You know, we're huge fans over here. In the latest episode, she bakes morning cookies for the crew of her new movie, The Adam Project. The show just keeps getting better and better, people. She brought her own measuring cups and spoons from home in LA to set with her in Vancouver. And of course, as always, she talks to her fairy bake mother, Ina. I love it. So funny. I felt extremely comforted by how she measures because I'm not going to lie. I measure the same way as Jen. Sometimes I'm lazy and I just pour my ingredients into my cup over the bowl. I level it out and that's that. And if any extra goes in, that's what's going in the cookies. This week, Jen was also in an episode of Hot Ones, a series that we all love here on this team too, where she revealed some of her favorite baking tips, like shredding butter with a cheese grater to skip the softening process. Jen, just want to let you know this, girl, if you're out there listening, we're going to keep covering you on the show until you come on the show. There it is this week. And for a true culinary take on all of this, we need a real expert. Please welcome your favorite professional baker, host, cookbook author, and Bigger Boulder baking creator, Gemma Stafford. Hi, Gemma. Welcome back. Hi, Mia. How are you? <laughs> I am doing so well. How are you? I'm good. You look great. I love that jumper. <gasps> Thank you. It's so fun. It's for my mom. It's soft. Um, I like that it's not too heavy, so I'm wearing it while I can since it's the beginning of spring, but soon it's going to be way too hot <laughs> for this. But you look great, too. <laughs> Thank you. As always. But what's new? Well, what's um, new? Yeah, what's new? Speaking of what's new, there is actually a lot that's new. We had some good, fun things to talk about this week. First, I'll just put it first because I know you love her. Jen Gardner, of course, our girl is back with another episode of Pretend Cooking Show. I know you love her, uh, but she does. She she's always so cute and funny. And in the video, she's making fun of herself because she's measuring over the bowl. So she has like her dry measuring cup and she's dumping in. I think it's like wheat flour or something. And then she's leveling off and she's just basically leveling into the bowl. Oh um, my gosh. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, because there's been times I've asked you in the show, like, isn't that so bad? And you're like, actually, that's not that bad. And I'm like, oh, great. And then there's times where it's like, that's a no-no. So is this a no-no? <laughs> so I have a, uh, an opinion on this. And I think a lot of bakers have opinions on this. Um, so there's there's lots of different things that are going through my head. But uh, it, it is, a, it is a no, no, because well, number one, <laughs> it defeats the purpose, right? So you're, you're scooping into your, um, your cup, but you're leveling off the excess into your bowl. <laughs> so it totally <laughs> defeats the purpose. Yeah. Then, uh, if we take a step back, some, there, there's two ways to measure dry ingredients. You, to some, some people say there's one way and that is to scoop into your measuring cup, level it off okay. and then put it into your bowl. However, I dunk. So you can dunk or you can scoop. I'm a dunker. I've always done it. I see very, very little difference in uh, the measurements, to be honest with you. You're talking like maybe grams. Like me personally, mm -hmm. I know that like the King Arthurs of the world out there, they're like, <laughs> you absolutely have to scoop and level off. That's the correct way mm -hmm. to do it. Um. So, but this is the way I, this is the way I do it. This is the way all my my recipes are written, and they work. So, uh, so I I don't. So that's my that's how I measure now. 
doing, <laughs> leveling it off into your measuring, your, your mixing bowl. <laughs> that makes good. no sense. But, but, but you know what? We'll give her, we'll give her a pass. <laughs> Thank you. And give me a pass too. I do it sometimes, but I mostly do it over my sink. I like level off you and do. then I put it over, but I still, I'm, I'm bad, Gemma. So yeah, your ingredients sometimes. go into your sink? Is that weird? <laughs> I so guess weird. I like, it's wasteful. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's not a lot. The thing is, I feel like I'm very good. I have a good eye and a good hand. And I never, it's never too much when I pour. It's only a little bit. And I'm just like, let me just wipe it off. But Jen in the video, she's like heaps and heaps. And there's like oh this gosh. much above the cup. I mean, for the people listening, you can't see, but it's like this much above the cup line. But I, I usually only have a little. I just, but I'll, I'll make sure to do it on the counter and Waste then just not walk it. Yeah. I'm gonna. I know this is so bad. Everyone, don't drag me. Just <gasps> kidding. You can drag me. I deserve it. But I'll just. I'll start swiping into my hand and I'll put it back. Do it bin. over this- your container. Do it over your flower container. Do you know? Uh, just or maybe don't be so messy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm so messy. I can't help it. Wait, okay, Gemma. This actually leads me to a question. Is there a sign of like a, a beginner versus an experienced baker? based on whether you scoop or dunk, as you say, right out of the bag of flour. Oh. Let's say I'm using flour or sugar, as an example, like the bag, or do you have tins? Like do professional bakers have tins always? Or tins Wait. is maybe not the word, but you know. No, what will, um, so I, I get what you're saying. Like when we do production here in the house, I have these big tubs of flour, all my dry ingredients, flour, powdered sugar, uh, sorry, powdered sugar, and my brown sugar, all that sort of stuff. Um, all my flours in these big white tubs. So because we get through so many recipes in a few days that we have to have big old uh, tubs of flour. That's mm. generally what you would see in a commercial kitchen. Generally, they're huge, they're huge, big rolly bins. And then at home, Ooh. you would have your little, yeah, at home, you'd have your little bag. But I like, um, I, I don't work from a bag. I like to have a container. It's just, it's less mess. Maybe you want to work from a container too, just saying. But um, it's less mess. And I don't know, it's just, it's, it's, it's more convenient. And then I can have it on my countertop rather than have to have it uh, in my pantry. Yeah, that is really smart. And I need to get containers right now because the, honestly, the lesson of this little segment right here is just that Mia's a bad, bad girl. She needs to get containers. She needs to stop wiping <laughs> it into the sink because I definitely do it out of the bag. And I tried to dunk once, Gemma, but it was a bad idea because I probably need a bigger container. So yeah. lesson learned. Um, okay, another question based off of this. Uh, Jen was also on Hot Ones this week and she gave a lot of, you know, baking tips, not hacks because we don't say that here, tips. Um, and she gave a really interesting butter tip. Sometimes if it's uh, if it hasn't softened, she'll like shave it with a grater, um, which I thought was interesting. So do you have any other interesting butter tips or hmm. baking tips as far as uh, butter for people? <laughs> um I enjoy Jen's videos. I have to say, I I don't, <laughs> um, I don't see how that would work. Like when you're talking about baking and you need softened butter to cream, um, like pop it, stand by the microwave, pop it in the microwave for five seconds, um, mm. like seven seconds, something like that. You can also push it over uh, a bowl of water, and that will help soften yes. it. There's a few different tips. Like some people, I. I think this is like personally put it into the microwave and don't walk away. Like that's my tip. Um, some mm. people put boiling water in a glass, pour off the boiling water and then put the stick of butter into the jar and then it softens. Just seems like a bit of a rigmarole to me. Um, <laughs> but, rigmarole. <laughs> that was fun. Um, honestly, because I bake so much and I know a lot of our listeners would, um, also probably fall into this category, leave it out overnight, leave your butter out. I always have butter out on the countertop, mm. um, because there's no better way to soften butter than by leaving it out uh, for a few hours at room temperature. If you live in a hot climate, it's a little bit harder, but, um, yeah, in LA it's perfectly fine. In Ireland, I do it all mm. the time also. That's but no, a, the grating, I'm sorry, Jen, but that's, I don't know. No. Yeah. I was wondering how that'd work. I'm like, that seems like a lot of grating because butter it usually, it doesn't call for like a little, like one tablespoon. It's usually, I feel like all the best recipes have like six tablespoons or something. Yeah. So it seems like a lot of work, did, um, but that, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, did she, did she, did she grate it with, so did she grate it with a box grater or did she grate it with a peeler? 
I think she grates it with the box grater. Like they didn't show it. She just said it <gasps> okay. in hot ones, but uh, yeah, but the box grater, but I'm so, like, seems like so I, <laughs> I, I, um, I, so that's a little bit different. I thought you meant she peeled it. So that's oh, a bit ridiculous. No. Box grater, <laughs> I get. If you are trying to have, get butter at room temperature to cream it, that's no, it's kind of a bit of a waste of time. But the box grater, yeah. I, I do that method when making pastries, biscuits, uh, scones, things like that. I freeze my butter mm-hmm. and then I grate it. So you end up with these tiny little bits of butter Ooh. all the way throughout your recipe. <gasps> and uh, it just makes for a really light baked good. So... I'm going to give Jen the benefit of the doubt and think that she was, you know, had that mentality in mind that she was trying to get little small bits of cold butter rather okay. than grating it small to get room temperature butter. Just saying. Got it. Got it. Um, and what you said about the putting the boiling like cup or bowl over butter, to, if you need to really just soften it in a pinch. I actually found that out on TikTok and I've heard that you've been scrolling down TikTok too, finally, and I'm very proud and I'm excited to hear what you've learned if you've learned <laughs> anything from TikTok. But I think you should go on TikTok. I think you'd make a lot of, I know Bigger Boulder Baking is, but I'd love to see, you know. Bigger Boulder Baking is, to be honest with you, Mia, I never got my head around Snapchat. I, uh, yeah, I don't I'm, blame I, you. I'm pretty, I, I'm pretty well versed on Instagram. However, I don't post a huge uh-huh. amount so if you follow Gemma Stafford Gemma lower score Stafford on Instagram I do post uh-huh. I post a lot of George I post a lot of family um LA you know what I'm eating what I'm what I'm baking but um I think I I'm more comfortable on Instagram honestly when I open up the TikTok app it uh I just get riddled with anxiety <laughs> I just, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on. So it's just, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm comfortable. I'm a creature, I'm a creature of habit and comfort. And I think I'm just going to stick on Facebook and Instagram. (laughs) And I, that is totally fine. Sometimes it's good to just use what you know. There's already a lot there. There's a lot of content out there. Okay. So last question for today, which always makes me sad. I'm like, I never want to stop talking uh, to you, but Lemon is huge. I feel like in the springtime, um, especially this year, there's been a lot of lemon going around and lemon recipes. So I'm wondering, just I'll kind of combine the two questions, but I want to know what's new with Bigger Boulder Baking this week. And also, do you have any like lemon recipes coming up? So I absolutely do have lemon recipes and we just launched some this week and I think the week prior to that. And then we have more coming out uh, as spring rolls on. We've got lemon cake. We have, um, which also is going to be featured in the Irish Independent magazine this weekend. Wow. Congrats. Uh, which you just, when you, just when you mentioned that, it reminded me. So I must <laughs> tell my mom to pick up a copy. Um, the... Uh, we have semi lemon semi fredo. We have we have a lot of lemon recipes, absolutely, and we've got some really great Easter recipes too. So, um, because that's coming up the weekend after next, so Wait, a lot of like say that slowly for me. There was one you said, and I I did not know what it was. Lemon semi fredo. Oh my gosh, what is that? So it's 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 a very simple kind of an ice cream you would make in a loaf pan. It's really easy. Ooh. It's really delicious. It's super soft. Um, we made it here a few uh, weeks ago. It was yeah. absolutely amazing. Carla came over, my photographer, and shot it. Ami was here and she made it. And uh, yeah, so we have some lovely Easter recipes. We also, Mia, not to leave anybody out, have some um, Passover recipes. We have homemade matzah, nice. which was just absolutely amazing, gorgeous. And uh, some other fun, flourless uh, recipes on there for Passover. So a little bit of uh, something for everybody. I love that. I'm very excited to go make those and read those. Um, and I want to say too, everyone, don't just don't just skip down to the recipe. Read what Gemma writes beforehand because it's they're really good tips, and she gives a lot of insight and history, you know, behind where all these things come from. So be sure to do that. Um, and a little, I'll leave you all with a very interesting fact I found. According to the Food and Drug Administration, lemon is a food without fat, saturated fats, cholesterol. It's very low in sodium, in calories, contains a high content of vitamin C. So yay, lemon. Put it in all everything you bake. 
for the rest of the spring. <laughs> Put it in there. Um, thank you, Gemma. That, so that's good. Thanks, Mia. Yeah. It was great to talk Isn't to you. So fun? It was so great to talk to you as always. I will see you next week. And for all of you out there, right after this break, we're going to be rolling our exclusive interview with Baker and Too Faced Cosmetics creator, Jared Blandino. He is so much fun. Stay tuned and we'll see you in a second. <laughs> everybody pull up your seats to at the counter a segment where we have a conversation with people who are doing interesting and amazing things in baking today we have jared blandino who's the co-founder of Two Face cosmetics and the creative force behind one of the most globally recognized makeup brands when jared isn't creating best-selling beauty products he can be found in his kitchen as the host of his popular baking series bake up with jared beyonce may keep hot sauce in her bag but he literally keeps chocolates in his please welcome Jared Blandino. Hi, hey. Jared. Hey, babe. How are you? Hi. I am doing so well, especially now that I'm here with you. How are you? I'm so excited to be with you. You're so amazing. You're so talented you. and beautiful to boot. So I'm excited to be here. Oh my gosh. Stop. I feel the same way about you. So this is perfect. Good. We're in alignment. <laughs> um, okay, so first things first, Jared. So we like to start the show with the question that isn't necessarily about baking because a lot makes up a baker, right? But we want to know kind of who you are as a person and makeup is your thing. So I know you got your start working at Estee Lauder, the makeup counter. Uh, so when you started this, did you know going in that you were going to build a freaking makeup empire? Like, did this cross your mind at all? You know, I'll tell you <laughs> truth. I actually fell into beauty on complete accident. Uh, I was going to school and I was an art teacher to kids and it just like living my life. And I fell into beauty on accident. And I will tell you the truth. Like my first three or four days in it, I discovered a new a new type of art and, and this type of arts instilled self-esteem into women. And it was personal and it was emotional. And I did see it differently than, than everyone was kind of seeing it at the time. And I saw it as an opportunity to express yourself and have some fun. And everybody was taking it so seriously. So did I know I would end up here? Absolutely not. Did I feel something inside me that was leading me to where I am? Totally. That's amazing how we just kind of fall into things. Like I fell into baking that way. I didn't ever start out wanting to, you know, go into baking. And yeah. um, it's just like you grow up around it and you fall into it. And I like what you said about instinct too, how it's like that pull. Um, that's that's a really important thing too when you feel yourself being drawn to something. Uh, but one thing you said too that I, I find is so interesting is that you were like, it's the 90s. Like everybody was taking makeup way too seriously. People yes. were wearing dark colors. Like there was no no fun anymore. Um, no. And then you decided to start Too Faced with your husband, Jeremy, because yes. um, you just wanted to make makeup fun again. So yes. how did that conversation go? Like, give us a look into that moment where you, you both turned to each other, or maybe it was just you, or maybe it was just Jeremy, and you were like, we need to do something about this. That's such a great question. I'll tell you the truth. So we were both working at the mall, working behind the counter. And I had gone to animation school prior to this. So I went to animation school for Disney and, War and War Warner Brothers. They had this little incubator school, but I got kicked out, Mia, because <laughs> I was rebellious. So I had been given a, a, a task of having a ball bounce across the page and we all did. And so by the end of my uh, balls experience, it blossomed into a couture gown. And I thought they're gonna be so impressed. Mia, I'm gonna be recognized. They're gonna see that I've got vision. And the teacher said, I did not ask for that. I asked for a ball. So anyway, it ended up not working for me. Dang. But, um, yeah, but I, I, I could draw. So um, so through, through my journey, um, Jeremy was at work one day and I had been animating, drawing this girl. And she was uh, just a mix of all the amazing, crazy, fun girls I worked with at Saks behind the beauty counter. And some of them were like this and some of them were like this. And, you know, it was just all of them. So I created a cartoon character named Envy. And I, I kind of thought, what would she wear? What would she drive? What would she be doing? And I literally created Too Faced, home alone. I, 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 I had a couple of days off and he came home one day and I said, listen, I have this idea. But prior to that, I was destroying every tester in the, te in the department. So I would take a Chanel blush and a Clinique, you know, lip gloss and mix it with a hard candy nail polish. I was just like, just destroying everything. So I had already come up with these, this reputation and these kind of little concoctions that I had wanted to do. And my husband now, um, we've been together 25 years this year. He's just the most incredible business mind. And even back then, um, he just made it happen. Together, we created 
um, like the first glitter eyeshadow ever and the first efficacious lip plump ever, lip plumper ever. And we've been doing it our own way since the very beginning and um, haven't been having a blast doing it. Oh my gosh. I love the name Envy too. I'm like, that's my new alter ego right now. I'm doing it. <laughs> yes. I'm taking it. Um, and one thing you've said too, okay, Jared, this cracked me up. You were like with the credit card, a laser like focus and a dream. Yeah. We started yeah. two faced, especially our credit card apart. Sometimes, you know, you got to swipe it. You got to swipe it, you know, to get to where oh. you go. But hey, not financial hey, advice. Like, but I'm nobody just saying, would give us a business do loan. What you gotta do. <laughs> nobody, like, they wanted to, they wanted a business plan. I remember the bank asked for a business plan. I'm like, what's a business plan? Like, I don't even know what that is. Um, no, nobody would give us money. You know, we had to do it on our own. My parents gave me a little money, but we ended up, yeah, I had to believe in our, in myself and believe in us. And we used credit cards and a little money that we had. And we starved for the first five years and we put everything back in. And we just really wanted to, to create something that would matter and that would change the world for the better. And, it, and in some way, reflect God's love. Like we're all about you know, helping you achieve the best version of you and hoping that you understand that you're seen and that you're loved and that you matter. And that regardless of what you find beautiful, I hope you find yourself in our brand because we want you to feel beautiful, you know? I do. I'm like, now I do because of you. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of, you know, your starting point, at, you know, that was your starting point for your makeup journey. So yeah. now kind of switching gears to baking food has been, people don't know this maybe, but food has been a constant theme in your life. Like we said in the intro, like you love chocolate, you know, yes. you've been baking since you were little. So what is your earliest baking memory um, that you can remember about baking? You, you know, my dad's hundred percent Italian. So I grew up with this amazing Italian family. And I just remember my grandmother, my grandmother Blandino being in the kitchen and spending all of these hours creating delicious pastas and different desserts. But it was the way she expressed her love. And I saw it that way. And she needed you to receive it that way. It was like, you had to eat everything on your plate because it was her love. She put it in there. You know what I mean? And I'd be like, yes. Grandma, like you know, but I understand it today is that it was a, such an expression of love. And that's what was her, that was her mm. language, her language of love. Mm. And so I feel like um, it really started there. And I understood the importance of the effort and the, and the like energy you put into a dish because it tastes yeah. better with that love, you know? Yeah, it really does. Um, and baking is such a way, it's a way, like you said, to express love, to nourish your loved ones. Um, and, you know, it's inspirational. It's a, it's a place that you can go to be inspired. Um, and you've said that food is a source of inspiration uh, and creativity for your makeup. So, yes. uh, you know, now tying these two things together, can you pinpoint the first time you realized like, oh my gosh, I can infuse chocolate. In a freaking yes, makeup I'll tell you that story. <laughs> so uh, we go to Hawaii once a year and I don't like the sun. So when I'm in Hawaii, I'm trapped under a cabana and I'm reading every magazine I haven't had the chance to read. And just, I get bored, you know, I'm trapped. So I start just getting like, I need to do something. So I do research, I look at magazines, I read books. And then this one particular day, I thought I'm gonna go get a facial. Like you stay here, put your sunblock on. I'm going, I'm going to go check out the spa. And so I went to the spa and they had offered a chocolate facial. And I said, what's a chocolate facial? You know, and they said, you know, did you know that um, cocoa powder is one of the most potent antioxidants on the planet? It's full of hydration. It has all these great properties to it. And I was like, wait, what? And I went and wow. grabbed my phone and I'm texting my team going, guys, we need to create something with cocoa powder. And I thought, I'm in Hawaii, put it into a bronzer. We'll tint it. <laughs> With the beautiful shade of cocoa, right? We ended up yes. creating, yeah, our chocolate bronzing category. It's full of real authentic cocoa. It smells like cocoa. It's full of antioxidants, full of moisture. It blends beautifully. It has a very authentic, gorgeous color. And that was the beginning, actually. And then I went in and created the peach palette that broke the internet, you know, based on the delicious nuances and beauty of a peach. And so from, from the very beginning, um, you know, I was inspired by food to create products, to create color. And now mm. I'm inspired by baking to create color and to create makeup. Because in the end, Mia, nothing is nothing is closer to my day job than baking. Taking different mm. colors, different textures, different ingredients to combine them up and make one new beautiful, delicious product. And that's what I do every day with eyeshadow and mascara and what we do in the kitchen, creating scones and cookies. And it's so amazing and the products are amazing. So in what ways is developing, you know, a formula for your makeup or an idea for your makeup 
similar to, I don't know, like developing a recipe. Do they, you know, are there any parallels? It's so similar. Like it literally is taking different ingredients, different textures, different um, flavors and combining them together to create, a, 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 let's say a beautiful eyeshadow palette full of 18 different colors, or you, you create a new like a cake with different flavors and different textures and you want some crunch and you want some something salty and something sweet. And you know, it's the balance and the beauty and the art of it. And that's what it yeah. really is to me. It's just a different expression of art. And so I started, I started baking online one day because I had thought like, it, you know, I want a new, during COVID, especially I thought I need a new outlet for creativity because we're all kind of trapped in our houses yes. and, we're, and we're exploring our houses like we never did before. Prior to this, my kitchen yes. was really just a, it was just a beautiful show place that I walked through to get from one point to the other, you know? And it's beautiful. I've seen oh, both. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I, and my, and the first thing I baked um, on my show was my, my lemon blueberry scones. And Jeremy was upstairs watching Game of Thrones one Sunday morning. Oh and God. I don't watch that stuff. I, lo I love a romantic comedy yeah. bit. Like I'm not into like <laughs> dragon blood and like dirty elves and things. So I, I was in the kitchen and I thought, I'm gonna, oh, I, want, yeah. I want a cup of tea and I would love to have a scone. Let me, let me try to do this. And I made that first scone and it was ugly, but it, it filled the house with this aroma and it brought yeah. Jeremy downstairs and he said, what am I smelling? And we enjoyed those scones together. And we had this beautiful moment and I put it on yeah. Instagram and I got the hugest reaction. And so I started my show, Bake Up With Jared, kind of through that on my Instagram account, at Jared Blend, you know? And um, every Saturday now I post a new baking video and together we're learning something new, getting together, having some fun and just in the end, creating something delicious we can share with each other. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's the best part of baking. I think is when, and, and you know, it's good too. When someone in the other room is like peeking me around and they're like, right. <laughs> I've got, what did you just make? Yeah, I need some of yeah. this. It's like the biggest compliment. Um, so you talk about, you know, bake up with Jared and I've watched every episode. It's so good. Oh, I um, love you so much. For, waiting for your TV spot. I'm like, hello. TV executives, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, but you know, you, like you said, you started in 2019 and it's just blown up. Like you got like, um, who is it? I'm trying to think of his name. He plays Aaron Samuels um, in Mean Oh Girls. yeah, Jonathan. Yeah. yeah, Jonathan Bennett, he commented and I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. like it's really, it's just grown and all these people are watching it. Um, so in what ways would you say over the years that it's been on now uh, has, you know, how has the show grown and how have you also grown from the show? That's a great question. So at the very beginning, it was me and my, and my, in my phone, in my kitchen with a baseball hat on and just like, what do I feel like doing? And you know, I'll Google a recipe, try something, put my own spin in. I'm always putting my own spin on stuff. And so it started off just loose and just whenever I felt like it to, you know, I got a lot of reaction and at Too Faced and at my own um, account, I was getting just a ton of reaction. We want more. We want to see this. Um, you know, retailers, Sephora, buyers at Sephora and executives at Ulta were saying, we love that. We want to see more. And I was like, are you saying like people are really enjoying this? Like I was I was actually kind of shocked by it because I wow. thought it would be just something fun for my family or my closest friends to get a kick out of. And um, since then, we've just kind of polished it up, taking it more seriously. I'm developing my own recipes. I'm working on a cookbook. <gasps> and um, yeah, the way you just drop that bomb so casually. I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Let's go back to this. Okay, it, that's fantastic. It's, Anyways. It's really just about baking things that I find to be beautiful, to be creative. And in the end, babe, it's good enough. That's my whole message. Mm. It's good enough. If you enjoyed it, if it tastes good, if you had some fun, it doesn't matter what, the, what it looks like. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. It's good enough. Yeah. And that's kind of my message is like, have fun with it. Enjoy life. Look for the best in one another and look for the best in yourself. And don't be afraid to take some risks and learn something new. Because me, I think yeah. so many people, I'm known for being like an expert, quote unquote, in a, in a certain field, or I've reached a certain level of success. And they, th and they think that's just who you are. And I think it's been fun, not only for my fans, but for my friends and my family to watch me learn something and grow in something new. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just think that's just a lesson we can all share with each other. There's always something new to learn, always something, an another flavor of life to taste. Yes. you know, and another layer of yourself to explore. Yes. And speaking of, you know, another flavor to taste, I think it's so cool that you can at this point in your life, just wake up and be like, Hmm, today, I don't know. I'm going to bake something based on one of my palettes, like yeah. better than sex, you know, cake. So yes. what is the next Too Faced product that you'd love to turn into a baked good? Like, have you done anything with the peaches palette yet? Um, well, the peach, the peach line is, has become really big, but I'll tell you, I'm just about to launch 
up my teddy bear collection. And it really was sparked by me eating these little Teddy graham cracker cookies. And the, and, you know, and they're just like, you can't have one. And the, and the, and the, and the, and the memory of like graham crackers and the beauty of a toasted, beautiful, you know, bake. And I thought, gosh, yeah. there's, there's nothing quite as naturally beautiful. And then I started looking at the nuances of like looking at a scone or looking at like a, I got like a cookie, a shortbread cookie and the different beautiful shades of brown and gold and copper. And it's actually quite beautiful. And I created an entire palette based on the beautiful colors of like melted sugar and, and caramelized, you know, cookies and, and things like that. And you'll see it. Um, I actually have one here. Do you want to see it? Yes. I'll show you. Oh it's my lovely. gosh, is that even a question? It's right here. So this is it. Oh, And bear. I'll show you. I love it. Yeah, B-A-R-E, Teddy Bear, <gasps> B-A-R-E. And you'll see, nobody's seen this yet. So I'm going to show you. you. No, let me get it out. We don't deserve. I'm so excited. Oh, why can't I get this This is out? the scoop. Oh, oh my goodness. Right, hold on. I'm having, oh, here it is. Sorry, I opened the wrong end. Sorry. So this is it. And you'll see, look at the colors. Oh and my gosh. And you'll notice there's just beautiful shades of uh, kind of ingredients that I use in my kitchen and different bakes that I kind of have been inspired by. And you see, they're just wow. new types of natural. And you see that one there? Yes. That color there. Is it like mar yeah. Is it like Yes, there's different shades um, that haven't been blended together that will create one shade so you can discover it. So it's about discovery. It's about flavor. And it smells like honey <gasps> graham crackers. I'm like, let me smell. <laughs> <laughs> smell a vision. Yeah. Your mind. Oh my goodness. No, but that's how it works. You know, it's 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 happening from all sides of me. It's happening from the makeup version of me the baking version of me, the fan version of me watching, watching amazing people like yourself and getting inspired. And it's just a beautiful form, like I said, of, of, of emotional art that I just love. And I'm so happy that people enjoy it. You know how I, I know you're truly an artist because you are inspired by everything. And let me tell you, that is, that doesn't come natural to a lot of creatives because people are always like, you know, like writer's block or like what, what happens when you do that? I'm like, no, my problem is that I have too many ideas. Like, Me too. I can't contain Me too. them. I can't contain them. Like I did a keynote speech and my problem wasn't like, oh, I have to get the 3,000 3, words. It was like, I literally have 5,000. What am I going <laughs> to cut the frick out? So, you know, one thing, and this is like maybe my favorite thing I found out about you when I was researching is that you say sometimes, you know, if you don't know what you're going to bake, you want to bake, but you're like, what do I do? You see a bowl in your cabinet and you're like inspired by the color. You're like, I'm going to make something this color today, yes. um, which is so cool. And so in that process, I found out you have two kitchens. They're very organized, very beautiful, and they yeah. mean a lot to you. Um, so we wanted to know, are you just as organized when you're baking um, as your kitchen is? Or do things get uh, a little messy? <laughs> no, no. I am the I am the cleanest, most like organized person in the kitchen. In fact, <gasps> I'll tell you, my I, I leave every cupboard open that I took something out of, so I know I do. I, something in that cupboard needs to be replaced. That's thing. a trick. That's a trick. And then I cover my marble counters with a cloth that prevents the marble counter from getting dirty. And then mm. I, I always have a wet paper towel and a dry paper towel to wipe up as I go along. And I just find it for me a much more pleasurable experience when I don't have to mop up or scrub afterwards. Like uh, clean as you go. And I feel like for me, you get, you get, you get, for me at least, it's a more organized, delicious, fun experience, you know? Oh, my God. Yes. Except that I'm like, I do know and I don't because I'm the worst person. Like I do what you're not supposed to do. I'm like, like I realized I really just revealed myself. I posted a video on Instagram. I was making scones and I did, um, what is it? Those time lapses. And yes. in the video, you can see me, I go to my cabinet, I get one measuring cup, I get the other. I do. It is, it is a mess. Like I'm not uh, chaos. I'm nowhere. Chaos. It's chaotic energy. Or, like, I'm nowhere. But, but it's, but it's organized, organized <laughs> chaos. But listen, that's what I love. I actually would love to be in your kitchen, getting your kitchen dirty. Cause I could have fun. But if you're in my <laughs> boo, we're going to be clean. We're going to keep it organized or keep it neat. That's how we're going to do it. I don't like get. I don't like getting flour all over my clothes. But, um, but, but occasionally it's fun. Like when we do Christmas cookies with my assistants, my assistants every year, mm -hmm. uh, Corey and Heather, we bake Christmas cookies together and I do it at one of their houses. And we, I mean, I've got like peanut butter up to my arm and it just, you know, sometimes you got to let go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have a good time. I, I really honestly, for a second, thought you were going to be like, let me come over. Instead of you saying dirty it up, I thought you were going to be like, let me home edit like your kitchen. I was like, yes, please do. Let oh, me open the door right now. Should we? Um, should yes. We? Well, <laughs> I don't want to take credit for that. 
<laughs> Listen, I have an amazing organizer named Amanda and she has changed my life and she comes in periodically and edits my cupboards and edits, edits my closets. Um, she's fantastic. And I posted about her and she's, she's incredible. Um, what's Amanda's, what's Amanda's Instagram? I for, I'll tell you what it is. You should follow her. Yes, she's, Amanda. She's an amazing person. Yes, we can put it in the show notes. So everybody, if you're listening um, and you want to see Amanda's work, you can just go into the show notes for the show um, and we'll, you know, include her handle so people can check her out. Yeah, um, it's well-organized what? Dot space. Dot space. Well-organized oh, dot space. You Check her out. Even the title is organized. I love it. So I know, I know, speaking, right? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I already feel better and more composed so just hearing You're it. You're so cute. I hope, <laughs> Stop. I just, you have this loving light in you and I just have to tell you, like, I want to meet your family because I can tell you were raised with such love and I can oh see it in you and I feel it in you. And it, you, you, more people need to experience that light in you because you're, you're amazing. Oh my gosh, really please. I'm like trying to do this job and you're going to make me cry. I'm like, no, but it's you, true. <laughs> I can feel that from you. I think that, Thank listen, this you. is more than baking. It's more than makeup. It's about human connection. And yes. I just feel like you've got something so, so special. And I, and I'm just Thank uh, you. honored to be here with you. Thank you so much. Um, that means a lot. And yes, my parents are amazing and they're great. I can and tell. I've learned a lot, um, a lot, a lot, a lot from them. So they're yeah. incredible. But props um, to mom and dad. I can yes. tell they you did a good job. <laughs> Thanks. They will love this. They will love this from you. Um, but so, you know, speaking, you know, we're kind of on the topic, but personality, individuality, joy, these are all things that I feel the same way about you. Like I I, I got that from you watching your videos, and even now I really I, I call it, you know. BDE, but instead B V E big virtual energy. I feel that from you. Um, and this all, you know, this makes who we are. And when it's, when your light's big, you can feel it. Um, and I think one thing about your light is, um, you feel like uh, it's funny cause you say you're organized in the kitchen, but I also feel like you don't like rules. Like you don't like rules when they're imposed <sighs> on you because, and this is how you freaking got two faced because like you were that. like, whatever yes. the rules. So yes. I have to ask you, is there a baking rule that you absolutely despise? And you're like, I'm, I can't get behind that. Like I'm not uh, doing yes, it. Or do uh, you follow the rules uh, in baking? I follow the rules to a point and you're so funny cause you hit it on the head. I'm a total rebel when it doesn't make sense for you. Not just to, not just to burn things down but if it doesn't make sense if it doesn't fit into my life we're not doing it and so the thing that i love about baking is it's such a on one side it's so scientific you have to put in the right amounts but then there's a creative side add extra lemon zest throw in some allspice mm. put some cinnamon in there if that's your flavor like make it your yeah. own put your thumbprint on it and i think mm. that's what i would like to share is don't be afraid to make mistakes and to try things and if it doesn't taste good well then just like feed it to your dog and bake something else. You know what I mean? Try it again. You you know what I mean? Like, don't be afraid to try and express yourself. Yes. Yes. And I feel like you're a true testament to that. And um, you're not afraid to try. And you've spoken before, you know, as an entrepreneur and a creative mind, you're like, I'm not scared to fail. Um, I'm not scared to be knocked down mm -hmm. and get back up again. So I'm curious mm -hmm. if you're open to sharing, do you have a huge baking fail? Cause it's part of the process. Like Are everyone you has one. <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm like uh, too many. I don't know. Where do I begin? A huge baking fail. Uh, I'll tell you, I was, I was, I was making a birthday cake for a great friend of mine. And I insisted that I was going to make this birth. This was my, like, I was going to do this for you. You know, I, it's so easy to buy a gift. I'm going to bake you something. I'm going to put my love in it. And I literally was talking on the phone and I forgot to put the eggs in. And I, I forgot to put the baking powder the in. Eggs. <laughs> Don't you? And you're like, did I pull extra eggs out? Why are there extra eggs? Out? And like, it, it was just not good. And it was too late. And I tried to like put frosting on it. I just tried to sell it. And it was not, it was just, it was so bad. It was embarrassing. And then it was her birthday cake. So that wasn't good. Don't do that. Yeah, I should have stopped off at Susie Cakes or something and just bought one at that point, you know? Did she still eat it? Well, they tried and then they were like, <laughs> just kind of. <laughs> did you tell them or did you just let them try? No, I go, I actually think I might have left, I, which apparently I did. So I, I, I think I left some ingredients out, you know, <laughs> have some more champagne. You'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Champagne yeah. is all that matters. It's um, always the answer. I need, I really am interested in champagne and baking. Like maybe that can be the next thing you make, like champagne infused something. Yes. I'll let you fill in the blank. That's, that's all you. You're the creative. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do more of that. Yes. Champagne and then wine. Gemma loves wine. So anything, something like with drinks ah. too, but now we're getting out of baking. But well, now you're speaking my language. 
I'm, I'm always ideating. Like it's crazy. I'm like, I need to control what's going on up here. <laughs> There's so many. Um, but Don't do control you- it. Let it flow. Let it happen. That's where the You're magic so right. is. That, that's your gift. God gave you that gift. Oh my gosh. I really feel like you, and you know what you should add next? You should be a motivational speaker. I mean, you kind of already are, but you, I I think you really do, um, have this light and just, you see things in people and I feel like you see it in makeup and baking and, um, you just have such an eye for that. Um, do you have a favorite creation at all or one that you get the most exciting, excited about as far as like your makeup that has subtle nods to baking? Yeah. You know, it's, it's usually always the last thing I'm working on because it's like the baby you're working on. But I'm yeah. incredibly proud of Better Than Sex. It's it's the number one <laughs> mascara in America and across the world. I was told you can't, first of all, you can't make a mascara that's pink. No, th- th- I got such pushback. And then they said, you can't call it Better Than Sex. I had to write letters. And in fact, oh. the cake that I just baked <laughs> called Better Than Sex, which started, yes. you know. So I had to actually write letters to certain retailers to say, let me explain to you where this name comes from. Let me let me tell you, oh, it's, a, wow. it's a cake that that they baked on the Today Show. And it was a saying that Marilyn Monroe, she answered back in the 50s, she was on Broadway for a a period. And and a uh, reporter said, how did it feel? And she said, it felt better than sex. And then my friend Madonna was on Broadway and they asked her, how does it feel? And she said, it felt better than sex. So there's a whole kind of, there's a whole kind of history of of using that name to mean it's the best. And I had to like explain that to people. But um, through that, I created a whole new category. And within our industry, actually, there's a category category within beauty called pink. And that is because of what we created, kind of that rebellious, glamorous, fun perspective of beauty. I have to tell you, I really use like the same makeup palette I've had since, or that I've used since I was like 12. Like my mom didn't wear makeup growing up. So I taught myself everything I know about makeup, which oh yeah, you can or cannot tell a, not a lot. Or You a look lot, amazing. <laughs> amazing. You. Skills. I, I ventured out though, and I bought, and I still buy your Better Than Sex mascara. Like it's Aww. that good. Like I had heard about it from people. That's how you know, you know, you. it's an amazing product. Um, and it's so well known. It's like one of your best, like you said. Um, yeah. So what it's have you- it is the best, the absolute the best, best selling product we have. And mascara is the most difficult thing to make within our within cosmetics. There are so many variables. I didn't know that. Oh, from the not just Who'd the formula tell? to the bristles and what the bristles are made of, and the mm. and the glue that holds the bristles in. It is the most complicated thing to do. And I wanted to afford women the um, option of not putting on false eyelashes and getting thick, lush, voluptuous, sexy lashes every single day. Oh, yeah. And that was my goal, and that's what we did. And. Thank God it worked out. You know, you are so good. I feel like you take things like you listen and you're like, okay, here's what I'm seeing. Like you see the big picture, like here's the landscape. And you're like, what are people not doing? And then you yeah. freaking do it. Like it, it's yeah. so cool. And that's what happened with Better Than Sex, the mascara, which I did not know yeah. that Marilyn Monroe story. So thank you for telling me. But yes. what have you baked lately that's better than sex? Well, I actually finally baked the Better Than Sex cake. I've been talking about it, heard about it, and um, I'll be posting that on Instagram. Um, yeah, I baked the Better Than Sex cake, and uh, or I already did, I posted it. And it had this delicious salted caramel drizzle in it. It was so delicious. And for me, it was like this full circle moment because I actually never never ventured out and baked it. And I got to bake it, yeah. and it brought this memory and this, this moment back to me in an edible, delicious, consumable way. <laughs> And um, it was just so much fun for me to do. And it was such a, a privilege that I got to experience that cake with the success of the mascara and, 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 and be able to do that. I did see it and I was hoping you'd say that. So I'm glad you did, but it looked so yummy. It looked it absolutely so, amazing. Bake that cake. It was so good. So All good. Right. Well, I'm like, let me head to Instagram. Let me pop it up. Let me start baking this afternoon. Pull do I have up to go back? Add Jared Blandino <laughs> and check it out. Yes. I'm like, do I have to go back to work? Absolutely not. Let's just bake cake. Okay. Oh no, boo, so- you're off, you're off for the day. You just you jump on <laughs> jump on my account. Have fun. Have some I'm gonna fun. be like, I have to make some calls. Jared Blandino said I don't have to go back to work. Thank you. It's true. Bye-bye. It's true. <laughs> I endorse it. Is this a flip phone? I don't know. (laughs) Wait, what were you using there? I really don't know. Oh my gosh. I'm like, hello? (laughs) It doesn't matter. Straight up Blendido. Hang up. Um, So so you've talked about the transformative power of, you know, makeup and, um, you know, what it's an effect it's had on women. Um, So how has the power of baking transformed you personally? Gosh, it's, you know, it's, it's allowed me to try things and to, and to, and to, to, 
fail with joy and fail in, mm. in a public forum, meaning it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to be an expert at it. I can learn along with all of you and kind of be that version of myself that I get to be with my friends and get to be with my family. Because I think for so long, I've put on the two-faced face and I've had, you know, I'm out there as like this pro and this entrepreneur and uh, I need to inspire and educate and entertain people so they understand what, you know, what, what it is that we're creating. And I think that bacon's just allowed me to have fun and not have to take myself so seriously or feel the weight of the pressure to be perfect or to be great and to just really just have fun and meet new people. Oh my God, I bet you've met so many people. And I, I'm gonna pull a Brene Brown here and ask you to repeat <laughs> something you said because everyone needs to listen so closely to this. It was beautiful. You said it allowed me, I think you said to fail with joy. That's not yeah. what you said, is it? Did I mess it up? Well, no, but, but that's <laughs> the essence of it. Yeah. That's the essence of it, you know, too. And, and isn't that amazing? And isn't that kind of what we all should allow ourselves and love ourselves enough to do? It is allow yourself to fail with joy. And the thing that I learned is failure is temporary. That's the beautiful gift of failure. Failure is temporary. Success lasts. Okay. So, so don't be afraid to fail. And people who have changed the world have failed more times than you can possibly even yes. imagine. And that's part of this, the magic of it. You learn mm. through your failure just as much as you learn through your successes and maybe more so, you know? Yeah. There's this quote. I love that. It. It's like, you can tell a pioneer by the number of arrows in their back. Like people, yes. you have to go out on a limb. You have to try things. You have to do, That's beautiful. you know, new, amazing things. And I always yes. say this about failure. I even hate using that word. It's kind of like that word that has stigma attached, kind of like, I don't know, like ambitious, you know, or bossy where it's not. I, I actually bad. like all the words. I like all the right? words you're laying down. I actually like all those words right? because am, am, ambitious is great. You should be ambitious. You should aspire. Bossy just means like, you know, what's going on, boo. That doesn't mean you, you shouldn't <laughs> listen. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be kind. Uh -huh. um, but those are great words. And I think failure is another one. Guys, failure is a part of all of our journey. If you're not failing, you're not trying. Hard enough, at least, you know? Yeah. If Listen, if, I, if, everything, if everything goes too smoothly in my world, I get very nervous. If everybody yes. loves what I'm doing, everyone, I get nervous. I need, to, I need to push buttons. I need to evolve things, you know? Whew. Take me to church. Take me to like, church. I'm like, it is Sunday. I'm going to say or so. Let's know? go. Let's go. <laughs> We're here. I'm like, thank you for taking me. Um, and it, it's true. Like they have negative st stigmas, but they aren't negative words. Like you said, failure is temporary. Like it's not, it's like when you, when you say like, oh, I failed. It's like, no, you didn't. Cause you got up again. Right. So that means you technically yeah. really did it in a way. Cause you, it's a process. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. perennial. It doesn't like end. Like failure is not a punctuation. It's no. a comma, you know, so. Failure um, does not last. And it only can last if you lean into it and you let it. Failure mm. is, a, is such a temporary kind of connector to your success. You need mm. it. You know, you need it. Climb it like a ladder. Yes. Oh my gosh. Woo. I'm feeling it. I'm like out here sweating. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Blandino spirits in me. I love it. Let's do uh, this. Let's do so it. We're, we're nearing the end. Uh, and I have a few last questions for you. Um, so I guess, you know, I'll just end with one actually. Besides, this is very simple. Besides baking and makeup, what is bringing you joy these days? You know, what's bringing me joy is, is for me, the conscious choice of being joyful. It is a choice. And through the pandemic and through political unrest and through so much division, I have made a conscious choice to look for the best in each other, to look for the for what unites us, not, not what separates us, and to choose joy and love first. And that's how I'm trying to approach absolutely everything. And through doing it, I hope that I can inspire others to do the same. And I, I, was, I was talking to somebody the other day. I'm almost not more interested, but I, I, I want to love and, and pull people in who maybe don't think I have the right to be her or I have the right to be married or whatever. I want you to get close to me so, uh, so we can make each other better through the shared experience of getting to know and love one another. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I don't want to just do. be around people who think the way I think. I want to be around people yeah. who don't. And I think that's how we make each other better. And I think today we need to approach every human being we come in contact with, with 
with the the looking for the best and looking for the joy and looking for the goodness in, in that experience and in that person because that's how we're going to move forward and make this world a better place absolutely gandhi said uh, my life is my message and i think so much like you said you have a light and it's just when you emit that like come close to me like get to know me you know as a human yes. at my core um i think you know, there's a lot of conversation going around that's like, I don't have to teach you about X, Y, Z. But I think when you are yourself, who you are as a human, people will see that yes. and they will naturally yes. learn from that. Like we're all just yes. learning um, and we can we can learn from each other. It doesn't have to be an explicit thing. Like it can just be by our vibes, by our energy and, you yes. know, um, by what we do, by what we bake, by what we make for makeup, you know, yes. um, and yes. you are just such, oh my gosh, I feel like I could talk to you forever, but we're running out of time. Um, so we're going to close this out before we do with a speed round. Okay. I'm very excited. So okay. I'm going to ask you a few questions and you just answer them. First thing that comes to your head, don't think too hard about it. And we'll be here to catch your answers. I'm very excited. Are you okay, ready? Good. I'm ready. Okay. Okay, ready? In three, two, one. Your favorite baking utensil. Oh, oh, uh, 100% a wooden spoon. A <laughs> good too. wooden spoon. Yes, so a good, good, good wooden spoon. Yes. It's so fun. I always feel better when I'm baking with a wooden spoon. Oh, this is not and if there's I'm weight like, in it, yes, a butter. great one. Yes. Yes. I'm like, I must be out here turning butter. I don't know. Um, okay, <laughs> what your am favorite I making? <laughs> this is What's awesome. This? just in your kitchens, really. Um, okay, your favorite childhood treat. <laughs> Oh, honeycomb candy. You know honeycomb candy? Yes. It's a, yes. Yes. I, my mother used to let me have uh, a dollar when I'd go to the mall and I'd go up to the little candy store and I'd give them the dollar and say, how much could I get for this? And they probably always gave me more than a dollar. <laughs> Thanks, mom, for being so cheap. But like I could get a dollar <laughs> worth of that. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank those people at the store. We love them. Yes. All right. Your favorite yes. late night snack. Oh, my favorite late night snack. Oh, that's going to be... Oh, you know what? If there if if there's chocolate cake, if there's <sighs> chocolate cake, I'm I'm more interested in the chocolate cake at night when it's kind of been left out for a minute and it's like gooey and moist and, and it's all over my face and it's like nasty and you're eating it in the dark and you're just loving every minute of that. Oh, that's I love this that. picture you've painted. And also we get to answer a lot about chocolate cake. Like I feel like chocolate cake is universally loved. I oh, want somebody to tell us otherwise, but I'm like, who doesn't like it? <laughs> but isn't chocolate cake so good when no one's around it's so and, good. It, and it's oh got gosh, kind of yes. been left out? <laughs> I eat it for breakfast sometimes with coffee. Like I'll make myself a whole cake and then the next day or throughout the week, I'll just do a slice yeah. each morning. That's probably That's because you were raised right. That's because you were raised right. Thank mm -hmm. you. I was like, maybe I should have admitted that, but it's true. I'm sinning no, in no. my truth. Uh -huh. <laughs> sinning my <laughs> truth. Yes. Yes. The truth. All right. Your favorite baking show. Oh my gosh. My favorite baking show. Oh, well, I love the Great British Bake Off. I'm obsessed <laughs> with that. But I also love my friend Rosanna Pensino. She's a great friend of mine. I think that her baking show on YouTube is incredible. She has a new yes. show coming out on HBO. So watch that. She, she's a super talent. Oh, my gosh. HBO. Yes. Quality content. Yes. Can't go wrong yes. there. Your favorite person to bake for? Jeremy. My <gasps> Jeremy. Yeah, always. Oh, my gosh. Very always. exciting. I love you two yeah. so much together. It makes me so happy. And congrats on 25 years, by the way. I didn't say that Thank before. Thank you. I um, love him so much. The best. The best. We love a supportive partner. Um, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay, your least favorite baking question that you get. Do you get any of those that you're like, ooh? Oh, my, uh, is this fattening? I'm like, <laughs> if you have to ask, don't even eat it. What, what, what is that? What is, like, don't you hate that? Is this fattening? Really? <laughs> Oh, if it wasn't, my gosh. would you want it? You are so funny. But, right. You know, is this diet? Is this? Yeah, I'm like, no, it's not. Just eat, put it in your pie hole and enjoy it. <laughs> this is I'm so happy. Like this is that is my motto. So I'm glad that we are on the same page as, as far as that. That's right? absolutely true. Um, and then yeah. finally, the number one thing you've learned from baking. Oh, the number one thing I learned in baking is to slow down and just enjoy the beautiful process of creation and creating something mm. um, that you ultimately can share with the closest to you, the people that you love. Wow. Amazing. And just so poignant. Boom. It's like, that's it. 
like a little whipped cream topping. I love it. So <laughs> thank you so much, Jared, for coming on the show. Thank it you. is such a joy to meet you and hear from your beautiful spirit and your soul and how you make art with makeup and baking. It's incredible. You're rebellious. You have these visions that are just amazing to say, what can I bring to the world that's not already there? And you're just so much fun. I'm so happy you're here. Where can people find you? How can they support you? We want you to feel supported. Let us know. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, thank you. Please follow me on at Jared Blend. You know, it's J E. R-R-O-D-B-L-A-N-D, I know. Um, also, at, you can find me at Too Faced, TooFaced.com. But please, hashtag Bake Up With Jared. I want to see your bakes. I love the community of baking. I love, I want mm -hmm. this to be a, a group of friends supporting and loving each other and just sharing a common recipe that can unite us, right? Yes. And um, so, yeah. And thank you so much. I have to tell you, you're so thank inspiring. You. I'm so, this is going to sound stupid, but I'm so proud of you because the, the, what you're bringing to the world and to the game is just such a positive, wonderful uh, thing. And you're, you're a rainbow in this world and you make, you make it brighter and you make it um, a better place to be for all of us just by being in it. So thank you. Well, thank you. Right back at you. I feel the exact same way. Um, you can also, if you're listening, follow me at yours truly Mia on Instagram, on Twitter. It's a little bit more of a hot mess. So I'm at hot mess Mia. That's my alter <laughs> ego. <laughs> Envy my alter egos over on Hot Mess Mia. Um, You're and don't so forget, funny. <laughs> you are. Don't forget right here on Need to Know. We're just starting out, so be sure to subscribe, rate, tell your friends to listen, share with just one person this week, leave a yes. comment, let us know what you want to see, and we'll be here next Sunday too. So until then, thank you all so much for listening. It was so great to meet you, Jared. Thanks, everybody. You too. Bye. Love you, babe. Bye. <laughs>